Good afternoon and welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier and thank you kindly for watching. Um, I did a radio interview with Elfas Nkosi about the coronavirus and the risk it represents to the world economy and that link is on the front page of rich.co.ke if you care to have a listen. Macro thoughts, it's just uh, neck snapping stuff at the moment. It's quite extraordinary and you know I was compiling the price list and by the time you go to do the podcast or by the time you watch it everything could have changed. Currently the Kiat, the Sedi, the Egyptian Pound and the Haitian Gourd are the best performing currencies in the world. That's from Trinomics and have a look at her chart, which is quite an interesting development. The dollar remimbi rate, and I said severally that it is one of the key currencies to keep an eye on, is currently at 7.13. And uh, this chart is from Chi Girl. And basically, uh, she's called this right from the very beginning, and it's now looking increasingly likely that the Chinese are going to have to readjust that currency a lot lower. The Dow Jones Industrial Average wiped out all the gains since Trump's inauguration and then bounced a little bit. Um, we're currently around the 20,000 mark um, and that's an incredible situation. President Trump, of course, nailed his colours to that mast and as Nassim Taleb said, if you own it on the way up, you own it on the way down. Dollar's safe haven status reasserts itself. The dollar index has had its best five-day return since October 2008. This is from John Althers. It's been an extraordinary performance. Um, but then John notes some of its worst weeks ever came in the weeks afterwards. So there may be relief in sight for the mini who prefer a weaker dollar. I tweeted last night at this juncture the Federal Reserve should just sell about two trillion dollars against an FX basket because they're getting this on a fire sale. Let's check in to see how major currencies are holding up against the dollar. This was from V. Patel FX, admittedly yesterday. The euro 1% from its lowest since 2017. Sterling lowest since 1985, 115.44. Australian dollar lowest since 2003. Kiwi dollar lowest since 2009. Canadian dollar lowest since 2003. The Swedish krona lowest since 2002, the Norwegian krona, the Brazilian real and the Mexican peso lowest on record. Um, Pepe Escobar, whom uh, I, I was quoting yesterday, said, what's certain is that the whole global economy has been hit by an insidious, literally invisible circuit breaker. And that speaks to the point I was making a few weeks ago when I said the world's economists and policy makers are flummoxed by the exponential and multiplicative nature of the COVID-19. The virus is not correlated to endogenous market dynamics, but is an exogenous uncertainty that remains unresolved, although the Chinese are indicating it's been resolved there. 24th of February, I said a rate cut or even four will produce a dead cat bounce and then a dynamic move to the downside and that policymakers cannot vaccine the market with rate cuts. This is non-linear and exponential, and nothing has changed my mind. 
a V-shaped recovery, COVID-19, coronavirus, is a fantasy and increasingly the world's economists and investment banks are admitting as much. Just an update from me in case you're interested, this is Raul GMI on Twitter. I've just closed all short positions in equities, oil, high yield and had closed bonds a while ago. I am now 100% focused on the US dollar, which he calls a wrecking ball indeed. He continues, this is going to get really, really ugly for EM and global economies and banking systems. The US has its own set of problems post-regulation. All global regulations post-GFC are going to have to be undone, but I'm not sure we will have time to change. At the end of all this, we will need to create a new system from scratch. The global central banks have been telling us this for a long time now. It will take time to play out and central bank balance sheets are going to explode to levels never imagined. We have created the perfect storm. An unimagined global financial, economic and potentially humanitarian crisis that is going to take everything we've got to stop it. I'm just not sure it's possible. Erg, we have got to hope for the best and plan for several unimagined outcomes too. And final point, the dollar and Bitcoin, he's a Bitcoin evangelist is all I got right now. I'm adding to Bitcoin and I max long dollars versus the Euro, Sterling, Aussie, Brazilian, Mexican, Korean won, Chinese renminbi and Japanese yen. Good luck. This is not a drill, he concludes. JP Morgan forecasts US GDP to shrink 4% in quarter one and shrink 14% in quarter two. And that speaks to the point when it also applies to China. Fantasy predictions of a V-shaped recovery in China have been dashed. And I said, in fact, China cannot just crank up the factory because that will risk a second round effect of infections. Oil falls to the lowest level since 2003. We're currently rebounding and we're at $23.70. It's just incredible. Analysts are saying it is possible we will see negative oil prices. Aramco will pay you to take oil, Bianco Research. Sterling at one point fell to 118.67, the lowest since 1985, that's Trinomics, and currently it's at 115.53, so it fell a lot further. Let's have some home thoughts. Beautiful sunrise in Lykepia. This photo is by Sophie Tyers. This is the sunrise in the Savo, photo by Andre Bonga via Kenya Pix. A. A. Olomi, who I follow on social media, and he's obviously an Islamic scholar of some kind, says, is it really social distancing if we are all surrounded by the jinn? The Quran says the jinn are made of smokeless and scorching fire. They are usually invisible to humans, but humans do appear clearly to jinn as they can possess them. Jinn have the power to travel large distances at extreme speeds and are thought to live in remote areas. So now you know. Life changes fast. Life changes in the instant, the ordinary instant. You sit down to dinner and life as you know it changes. And hasn't it changed? The zeitgeist of a time is its defining spirit or its mood. Capturing the zeitgeist of the now is not an easy thing. 
because we are living in a dizzyingly fluid, I should have said viral moment. Paul Virilio cracked a joke, the end of the world is a concept without a future. I take you back to Albert Camus' The Plague because so many people continue to propagate the story that this is no worse than the flu. And this, at this point in time, you've got to be blindingly stupid if that's what you think, or mathematically illiterate. Listen to what he says in the book The Plague, La Peste. In this respect, our townsfolk were like everybody else, wrapped up in themselves. In other words, they were humanists. They disbelieved in pestilences. A pestilence isn't a thing made to man's measure. Therefore, we tell ourselves that a pestilence is a mere bogey of the mind, a bad dream that will pass away. But it doesn't always pass away, and from one bad dream to another, it is men who pass away, and the humanists first of all, because they have taken no precautions. <coughs> and then he speaks about a priest. For a while God gazed down on this town with eyes of compassion, but he grew weary of waiting. His eternal hope was too long deferred, and now he has turned his face away from us. God's light withdrawn, we walk in darkness, in the thick darkness of this plague. And to quote Pepe Escobar, what's certain is that the whole global economy has been hit by an insidious, literally invisible circuit breaker. Okay, let's go to political reflections and let me start with the latest data points. 218,824 confirmed cases, but really it's about the multiplicative nature of the caseload. 8,810 deaths and 84,121 uh, people have recovered. But bear in mind, I don't think this data set is capturing everything. It was a big day yesterday globally with 15,508 COVID-19 new cases. That's Remy GMI. That was the day before yesterday. COVID-19 death toll in Italy jumped by 475, the highest number recorded anywhere in a day. Um, and that's what I was writing about, the viral moment in that article. The link is there as well. More cases in the US than Italy had at the same stage. That's J. Byrne Murdoch. Who is the steepest exponential increase? Log Y axis means steeper the line, more exponential. For last six days, definitely USA. That's Dr. Eric Ding. And yesterday I started to think about the risk of war because I've looked into the origins of this thing and it's clearly manufactured in a lab. If you were an adversary and you knew how to game the timing, then the COVID-19 is indeed the most viral of missiles, striking at the heart of the White House and relying on Trump's personal characteristics to delay his response because of his ego and because of the election. I wrote some weeks ago, it will be a Trump virucide. He is already behind the curve, and the curve is parabolic, exponential, and nonlinear. Have a quick look at the Daily Show because it speaks to the point about his delayed reaction. The virus, uh, the coronavirus task force is here to chew bubble gum and thank the president. So, going back to Bellagis, the virus may be the most dangerous adversary America has ever faced. 
it's like the US was invaded. The normal defences fail, it can't be bombed, bank accounts can't be frozen, unbreakable morale, no supply chain, lives off the land as infinite reinforcements and is fully decentralised. And that's why I quoted William Burroughs and uh, merged him into making this point. A non-linear and exponential virus represents the greatest risk to a control machine. Referencing what Xi Jinping has been saying, in, Chinese, in a Chinese cultural context, the devil means white devils or foreign devils, guaylo in Mandarin, guaylo in Cantonese. And Pepe says Z was delivering a powerful statement in code. And therefore I saw a tweet from China Hand has written an article and I think war is not such a tail risk as some folks are pricing it at. Trump, I want all Americans to understand we are at war with an invisible enemy but that enemy is no match for the spirit and the resolve of the American people. Z's terminology is a major clue. He said on the record that this was war. And as a counterattack, a people's war had to be launched. Trump and the Republican Party are now behind in the election 2020. Could the coronavirus and the hesitant reaction to it cost Trump his re-election, J.S. Blockland. It's worth listening to this compilation of Trump quotes on COVID-19. This is from Mike R. Carpenter. That took me to Lenin. There are decades when nothing happens and there are weeks when decades happen. The viral moment has indeed arrived, as you can see from the numbers. Now, to the point about these numbers, there are probably 25 to 50 people who have the virus for every one confirmed. Dr. Marty McCarry, John Hopkins. And about the origins of the virus, I wrote about that on the 1st of March, and I quoted Don DeLillo's Libra. There's always more to it. This is what history consists of. It is the sum total of the things they aren't telling us. Then I quoted Thomas Pynchon. If they can get you asking the wrong questions, they don't have to worry about the answers. And finally, I quoted William Burroughs. A paranoid is someone who knows a little of what's going on. Have a look at that article, because I looked into it. I'm not a scientist but I looked into it quite closely. And the clue is in the HIV insert. What on earth is it doing in there? Um, 16th of February, I said viruses exhibit non-linear and exponential characteristics. 3rd of February, I spoke about the non-linearity and exponential risks. There's been a whole argument that young people are not at risk, but in Daegu, a 17-year-old showing pneumonia-like symptoms died on Wednesday, raising concerns as cases with teenagers and children were thought to be less fatal than older people. The KCDC is yet to confirm the case as COVID-19 as the result of a posthumous test is still pending. But health officials noted the diseased had mixed results, both positive and negative, when tested several times while hospitalized. And that several times is important because it's turning out that people are being tested six times, turned out negative, and seventh times. Now, what does that mean? Is South Korea's testing mechanism inefficient, or are people totally asymptomatic when they've actually got it? Let's move on to the currency markets, which have been the wildest I've ever seen. Euro dollar 108.59, dollar index 101.50, Japanese yen 108.90, Swiss franc 0 0.9706, the pound 115.33, the Australian dollar 0.5716, 
Um, India rupees 75.0825, South Korean won 1276.81, Brazilian real 510.69, Egyptian pound 15.74, and the South African rand at a fresh all time low of 17.40. Euro dollar, as I said, 108.57. Uh, um, these airline stocks, Boeing, hotels, um, cruise, cruise liners, which have all collapsed, that's all about the repricing from a hyper-connected world to a world under quarantine. Interesting interview uh, about Deutsche Bank and Trump, a match made in heaven. This is on Real Vision. August 2017, I said, any financial expert will tell you that President Trump's financial affairs are a smoking gun. Deutsche Bank loans were surely mirror transactions where Deutsche Bank was a commission agent interposed between Trump and the real lender. Commodity markets, let's take a look at that. 1485 gold, it's been disappointing, but obviously we've had a giant margin call and people have dumped everything in order to make those margin calls, whether that was the right idea or not is a different matter. But I, for one, think that it is a tremendous buy, given the amount of uh, money they're going to print. Crude oil obviously dropped below $25 a barrel, touched an 18-year low, and is currently at $24.18. It was a horrible day for emerging market currencies yesterday. This is from Paul Wallace. South Africa's rand at an all-time low, Russian ruble fell 5%, Mexico's peso and Brazil's real already at record lows depreciated some more. That took me back to February 2018 when I was writing about the end of Hallison days. Latin Alcione, daughter of Julius and the wife of Sikhs, when her husband died in a shipwreck, Alcione threw herself into the sea whereupon the gods transform them both into halcyon birds, which are kingfishers. When Alcyone made her nest on the beach, waves threatened to destroy it. Julius restrained his winds and kept them calm during seven days in each year so she could lay her eggs. These became known as Hallison days. When storms do not occur, today the term is used to denote a past period that is being remembered for being happy and or successful. Here's how the oil crash is hitting emerging market currencies from Saudi Arabia to Nigeria, Angola, Russia and Colombia. And you can see that the Algerian and the Nigerian currencies are anomalies and that they will not last where they are for long before the market breaks them. Sub-Saharan Africa, last count that I saw, and this is clearly an undercount because I track in real time and just in South Africa, in Gauteng, for example, I saw that there were 61 potential cases. But according to the latest WHO Afro data, there are 633 confirmed COVID-19 cases in Africa and 33 countries and 17 deaths. In the past 24 hours, the Gambia, Mauritius and Zambia have announced first cases. There's a link for Africa cases, uh, who Afro if you're interested. Yesterday, the South African Health Minister confirmed 116 cases of coronavirus. But the alarming thing about South Africa, he, in, he uh, announced a further increase of six local transmission cases uh, to add to two existing local transmission cases. And once you've got that, it's essentially gone viral. At least 61 people have been diagnosed with the coronavirus in Gauteng. That was as of this morning. South Africa has only about a thousand intensive care unit care beds in both public and private hospitals for a population of 57 million. Nigeria with 200 million is estimated to have far fewer. This is the Financial Times and this is the problem Bill Gates was speaking about. Senegal is so far the only country in West Africa with a local transmission hotspot. As per ECOWAS, it's the holy city of Tuba, uh, DPAQ report and 
it's 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 kind of uh, unfortunate, isn't it, that all these religious places where people congregate are actually petri dishes. The Italian ambassador to Burkina tells me he has tested positive for coronavirus. He has not been to Italy since November. He insists he caught the virus here in Burkina. That's another local transmission case. <clears throat> As Bill Gates said, the disease, when it comes to Africa, will be more dramatic than in China. And I don't want to play down what is happening in China, he said. Security alert reports of anti-foreigner sentiment. This is the US Embassy in Ethiopia, which it probably is the most egregious example of undercounting and under-testing. They've done less than 50 tests. Um, and now they're playing the race card. Typical derogatory comments directed at foreigners, the terms China, Ferengi, have reportedly been coupled with the label Corona, Incidents of harassment and assault directly related to COVID-19 have been reported by other foreigners living within Addis and other cities throughout the country. Reports uh, indicate that foreigners have been attacked with stones, denied transportation services, being spat on. Please remain mindful. 24th of February, I said, we're past the point of no return, and now the evidence is in, and we are. Gladwell called it the tipping point, the moment in an epidemic when a virus reaches critical mass. It's the boiling point, it's the moment on the graph. When the line starts to shoot straight upwards, that moment is upon us in Africa. International seeding events occurred in mid-January, thus we have a critical 10 weeks from then to late March, to contain these nascent outbreaks before they become sizable, and they're becoming sizable in Africa now. This is an e-tracking map of the COVID-19 in Africa. Uganda's president is calling for scientific weddings for couples in a hurry. I don't know what that means. He also said kill ratio of virus is not very high compared to Ebola. This is only if the victims are in perfect health, however, the virus will kill only 3% of the 100% that are infected. I wrote about the impact on the continent in an article on the 2nd of March, and I said the first issue is whether the coronavirus will infect the continent. There was a great deal of skepticism at that point uh, by Africans that it was going to affect them. We know that the coronavirus is exponential, non-linear, and multiplicative, I wrote, what exponential disease propagation looks like in the real world. This is from Epsilon. Real world exponential growth looks like nothing, nothing, nothing. And we were in that nothing, nothing, nothing phase. Now we're in the cluster, cluster, cluster phase and the boom is coming next. Because viruses exhibit non-linear and exponential characteristics. The number of tests we have is very, very disappointing. It's maybe 40 or 50, and that's in Ethiopia, which is an epicenter of disease, in my view. Only 200 intensive care units in Addis. I'm sure that's not, I'm sure they're less. Don't be fooled by COVID-19 numbers from countries that do not test our world in data. And as I said on the 27th of January, I have to assume that the coronavirus is already in Africa, but just not diagnosed. That's a racing certainty. I said that on the 27th of January. And that on the 3rd of February, I said Bole is the epicenter of China-Africa connectedness and, frankly, connectedness of the world and, and, and Africa. My article in the Africa Report, Debt, Virus and Locusts Create a Perfect Storm. Um, I said, uh, this is a perfect storm, buckle up and let's stop popping the quaaludes. South Africa's rand is headed for its weakest close on record. It's fallen about 2% uh, to almost 17. Subsequently, it's fallen nearly to 17.50. South African all shares down 32.37% year to date. Egyptian pound is at 15.75. EGX 30 is down 37.28% year to date. Nigerian all share down 15.1% year to date.
Ghana became the first sub-Saharan African country to cut interest rates in response to the coronavirus pandemic, reducing its benchmark to an eight-year low, cut rates by 1.5% to 14.5%, uh, said GDP could decline to 5%, could even slow to 2.5% in a worst-case scenario. Ghana Stock Exchange is down 3.3%, so far this year. President Manangagwa tells ZANU PF supporters in Yanga that a ban on large gatherings he announced yesterday will only take effect on March 20. Malawi's Peter Mutharika on Tuesday fired the country's army commander whose men have in recent months protected demonstrators protesting against fraudulent elections. He's attempting to quash new balloting that would require him to win more than a 50% majority to secure a second term, has refused to ratify new electoral laws and filed an appeal against the court's decision to nullify election results. This is a photograph of a medical practitioner dressed in protective gear at the coronavirus isolation and treatment facility in Bugatti District Hospital on Friday, March 6. The place looks like a rehearsal point for demons before they attack the world in the form of coronavirus, tweeted ODH underscore Charles, a photograph of Nairobi. Safaricom was the day's main feature yesterday with tw over 20 million shares traded, gained 25 cents to close at 25 shillings and 35 cents. Kenya shilling heading towards 106. This chart is from Mosey Hezbon. Nairobi all shares down 19.6% year to date. Standard Chartered reported full year earnings per share grew 1.732%. Their holding of government securities increased 3%. Loan book to customers grew 8.4%, total assets grew 5.8%, profit before tax grew 2.762%, profit after tax up 1.69%, EPS up 1.732%, dividend per share increased 5.263%, they pay good dividends. It's a solid franchise, solid, strong pivot to digital is keeping a lid on costs and a, an attractive share to buy on any retracements. Co-op Bank reported full year earnings per share was up 13.761%. Uh, investment securities held to maturity up 54%. And this is going to be potentially a problem because a, the banks are limit long. Uh, loans and advances to customers up 8.68%, total assets up 10.545%, profit before tax up 14.9%, uh, EPS up 13.761%, earnings, uh, uh, earnings per share up 13.761%, dividend maintained at a shilling. Solid results, inexpensive share on a price earnings ratio of 5.1411. CIC Insurance reported earnings per share slumped 33.33%, total assets up 6.8%, fees and commission income up 41.8%, investment income down 2.025%, total income up 3.284%, Earnings per share down 33.33%. Cash and cash equivalents at the end of the year was down a whopping 54.943%. Group registered a decline due to higher year-on-year -year growth in claims expenses by 6% due to adverse experience in key business lines. That's going to get worse. Directors do not recommend the payment of dividends for the year. Uh, I think they're going to have an even more challenging year in 2020. The NSE 20 is down 22.81% so far this year. Thank you for listening.